Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Well, this is a new series called The Misinformation Files, Episode 1. Now, what I'm going to bring up here is the truth, exactly what happens, because if we're ever going to get anywhere, if we're ever going to get past all our problems, we have to know the truth. Something that is just plain and simple, never reported, or is you've been told your urban myths that we all live in uh, by really the worst people on this planet, teachers, ministers, your parents who are ignorant, and of course people don't generally read. Everything I'm going to state is verifiable by third and fourth parties, people I have not connected to, and most of this information can be easily found. The bottom line is people don't read anything. They, plain and simple, they go by what movies do, they go by what their buddy tells them, they go by that their next door neighbor told them, all the bogus stuff that has absolutely no value whatsoever uh, in terms of the truth. Now, if we keep living in a fantasy, we're never going to resolve any of our problems. And that's one of the, uh, the main difficult situations. So I'm going to cover today, because I want to keep these things short and sweet, is General Douglas MacArthur. Now, um, he actually retired just, because, just before World War II and was brought back into active service. Uh, this guy was in a lot of military campaigns that go back into the late 1880s, Mexico, etc., uh, that went on uh, so frequently. And right up into World War I and everything else. He was highly decorated. I believe he got seven silver stars. But Daddy was a general, and he was picked as one of these guys uh, to be the hero for the nation, to keep everybody raw rawing as well. So that's why we need to understand that Daddy was a general. Did he earn all these silver stars? I don't know. I find that to be ridiculous, particularly as a commanding officer uh, that was lavished on um, honors. This happened many years later with the grandchildren of the despicable George S. Patton, uh, whose uh, all of his children became generals. Why? Because they were so smart and courageous? One of them, of course, uh, was by Obama, uh, was given Afghanistan to run. And we heard about what happened there. He had a victory with his polo ponies. So the whole idea is that uh, it's the nonsense that is involved in there and the horrible leadership that we have in the military in particular. And again, this can be verified by many other sources. People have written books on this and everything else. It's a known fact. And we're not criticizing the average guy who gives his life for a corrupt, rotten system unknowingly. Uh, but we're talking about horrible military leadership uh, that uh, in terms of the officer corps, which is rotten to the core. And quite frankly, the Americans by themselves have never won a war. Now, certainly the Allies have won wars, World War I and II, but certainly this was done with massive amounts of help of uh, other countries, far from the incompetent boobish Americans uh, who really have never done anything. Um, right up to the present wars, where we can't even hold an airport while we're trying to evacuate people. This is the kind of nonsense that you run into. Uh, so the whole idea is we have to keep this in mind. Now, Douglas MacArthur came from this military family uh, and uh, had a long history of that. As I mentioned, his daddy was a general. And he had all sorts of awards and everything else that he was given through his career. And he went up the ranks pretty quickly because daddy was a general and they needed somebody to wave the flag uh, for every campaign. And of course, this was done right in World War II, right up to one of his major mistakes, that instead of criticizing him going into World War II, particularly right after uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, they needed heroes. So anything the generals did, they weren't slapped uh, in the face. They were given medals for even with their highly incompetent act acts that, of course, General MacArthur was famous for in the Philippines. So we all need to quite understand that with the bigger picture of what's going on there. So he had his World War I and everything else and went through all that. And of course, we know what a waste of time that war was. Uh, basically, just a break so that uh, the uh, fascists could come back worse than they were before. They were so traumatized by World War I, uh, the Germans, that they couldn't wait to start World War II, while an entire generation of British and French were lost. But that didn't bother them. And of course... 
this is the kind of nonsense that goes on. So uh, he was out front leading and whatever went on there. And who knows if all of these things have, uh, but certainly he was the guy that was sitting in the back uh, drinking coffee uh, while everybody was dying. So we have to give him credit for that. And I have certainly had a long military career. I'm sure he did a lot of good stuff, but he also did a lot of bad stuff, including uh, basically giving the Philippines uh, to uh, the Japanese because of incompetency. So let's jump ahead to that because World War I is a diluted mess and there's no reason uh, spending a lot of time on that. So World War II, he was appointed the head of the, I'm not sure the exact there, but the Pacific Command in Asia there and was stationed with a huge amount of troops, over 100,000 troops, a huge, huge submarine fleet, airplanes, etc. So there's a big military force there. Now, Pearl Harbor happened, and they contacted MacArthur and said, well, battle stations, you're next. He got his pipe out and went and sit on the beach. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but certainly did not prepare himself. Now, he's famous as a general for saying, and I think this is Hollywood, uh, that I will return. Well, I don't think... I think what he's known for, from what I can see from a little quick research I did, is that I have returned because he ran like a stuffed coward out of the Philippines, uh, leaving hundreds of thousands of American dead bodies and a whole bunch of courageous Filipinos who fought with the Americans that seem to be ignored in world history, who fought quite valiantly uh, against uh, Imperial Japan and paid a big price with a lot of their lives. So let's, let's give them a big cheer. So little fancy boy used to have a pipe for interviews and a pipe for when he did things. So he wanted a giant pipe to look like uh, he was a giant man, I guess. Was that kind of like his um, little boy? Was that part of his, you know, like they say guys buy sports cars because this is a phallic symbol? Well, it kind of looks like that with him. He had a giant pipe that he used for uh, his, and he knew how to use the media. And this is why he got so many medals. So he knew the Japs were coming, and he didn't put up a proper fight. Uh, he didn't use a massive, the largest submarine uh, force in the world, to take out a lot of it. He could have really hurt the Japanese and possibly even built, beat them. Uh, many of his planes were shot on the ground. He knew they were coming, and he didn't prepare for himself. So his entire military strategy in, in the Philippines was horrific, and he uh, eventually pulled back to, to Bataan, which eventually was taken by the Japanese, where uh, about 10,000 uh, American and Filipinos were murdered uh, by the Japanese on the Bataan Death March. How oh, no. So because uh, they surrendered, because their general had left, ran to Australia, and had some shrimp on the Bobby, and... Um, left them there, because I shall return. Now, I don't know if he said that or not. I think that it's, I have returned is probably what he said, just like so many things that uh, we think have been said, but what comes to us from movies, which is dangerous to get information from movies, you can't tell a story in an hour and a half or two hours, near impossible. So you take stuff out that's fun, interesting, or sensational that may not have anything to do with truth. So the whole idea is that we have to keep that in mind. So... So the whole idea is he lost the Philippines, eventually fled to Australia uh, with whatever little force he had and kind of protected Australia. A lot of people think that Australia would have been taken by or attacked by the Japanese if it wasn't for the American presence there. So um, he certainly defended Australia uh, to a high level. Uh, or so it appears. I'm not sure about all that. That's another issue. So we're just talking about him. So he eventually came back. Um, and again, there were uh, so many people were captured and murdered in the Philippine uh, battles that it is uh, frightening. But eventually, uh, he was assisted with that. And because of his great running and uh, escaping to Australia, uh, the president, I believe it was, I don't think that, uh, I think it was Roosevelt that was still alive at that time, um, gave him a medal. Now, is that the kind of medal he got in World War I as well? Another silver star, another pat on the back. You did a great job. Glad your planes are still shot on the ground. I'm glad that your submarine navy did nothing. And all the stuff that went on there. So, um, 
And again, the uh, Asian uh, Asia was involved a whole bunch of people from the Australians, the Dutch, the Filipinos, uh, the Korean. There's a whole bunch of people fighting for the, quote, allied forces there that were instrumental in taking that back, including, of course, the main pressure that was put on Japan was the Russians who had them from the back. Isn't that interesting? Including the Chinese who fought against the Japanese and who the Japanese murdered over 50 million Chinese. Um, they say around 20, but you know, that's if you count every other one. So the whole idea is that uh, this is the kind of thing that goes on. So it's far from um, the Americans moving in there doing things uh, with a lot of their incompetency uh, that went on there. So, I mean, this is MacArthur. He knew it. This was after Pearl Harbor, and he just basically gave up the Philippines with a very pathetic fight. Now, again, you can read about this. It's not my personal conclusion. Anybody that knows anything about military history and wants to read about it can read about the pathetic uh, uh, protection he did for the Philippines, which I'm not even sure why. But certainly at his age then, maybe he was a little senile. Whatever may be going on, but of course, you know, let's make him a general. He's kind of stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense to me, Dr. Turk. So the whole idea is that um, let's then bump ahead. So again, even after retiring before World War II, and he stayed in throughout World War II, he stayed in uh, for the Korean War. Because the wars never end, and they never end because nobody ever finishes them. But well, let's let's uh, jump back a little bit here. He was again uh, went into Japan and um, took over the uh, Japanese nation and got them uh, supposedly was ruling over them, resetting up everything else. And of course, did another botch up, crappy, cowardice job, allowing uh, the emperor to stay as a god form uh, because he was too scared of rebellions like most military men are, because they've seen the frightened uh, reality and the fear of battle, the destruction, the decay, the heads flying, the legs flying off, the blood everywhere. They don't like to fight. Most of them are cowards. So the whole idea is that he decided to surrender to the Japanese instead of them surrendering to us in terms of policies, etc., and giving Hirohito his same status. Allowing for the Japanese to continue to do their horrible things, even taking war criminals. Does this sound familiar with the Deutsche Germans who were taken into America by the tens of thousands and, of course, allowed to continue in their businesses and everything else? Yeah, well, it does. And the whole idea is that, you know, these people then live in a false world uh, where there are billions of particularly American dollars used to protect them and build up their society. And then they wonder why they're so prosperous. Just think if we took the two or three trillion dollars we spend every year for the military and put that into our economy, built hospitals, roads, etc. Everybody would be driving a Cadillac and sipping on fancy wines and eating filet mignon. So the whole idea is this kind of incompetency and why we allow military leaders to go in and do this, I have no idea. They should be there to support the people who know what they're doing and there should be policies. So this is the same old nonsense that has happened every place. In. So he screwed up the entire Japanese situation of people who, as I said, murdered from 20 to 50 million Chinese, had hundreds of thousands of Korean sex slaves who tortured prisoners and everything else. 80% of the prisoners taken in uh, Japan uh, never came back. How nice. <laughs> so, but you can see them all go to Honolulu to the... Uh, Arizona Monument, and you'll find all the uh, Japanese there. Clicky, clicky, oh, yeah, we blew their ship up. Ha <laughs> ha, we had a good time. So the whole idea is that uh, this kind of nonsense and allowing the same cultures to go in there and take over. If you think there's any difference between a, uh, a Japanese from 1930 and a Japanese from today, you're kind of ignorant and basically stupid. So the whole idea is they do that, and older Japanese men are nasty and everything else, and all the kids think nothing happened as the same thing goes on in Germany, who they think that, oh, that nothing happened. So Hitler was a plumber, and he did bad stuff. He didn't clean the toilets well. Yeah. So this is the kind of shit that we run into. And, of course, um, it's interesting, uh, the bombers that killed our troops and everything else, uh, engines made by Mishibishi. Heard about them? Yeah, they have cars out there we buy. And all the other Japanese companies, as we have with the German companies, who murdered all of our people, are still in business making lots of money. 
and the families who are the disgusting built that they were are still making lots of money. So they certainly that shouldn't be the case. Uh, anybody that knows anything about that would be uh, is just foolish. Certainly the Roman Empire didn't that, and certainly the Russians said that you should never rearm your enemies. You know, again, if it wasn't for Russia, we would have nothing today as much as uh, they're frowned upon um, in general, which is probably a bunch of misinformation like the ridiculous Ukrainian war, which was started by the Nazi Ukrainians uh, to uh, make the ultimate movement, which will happen another 40 or 50 years as, the, as we get the new Hitler movement coming from. So the whole idea is that these are facts. They're all easily known. So the whole idea is that, um, again in Korea. Then we move them up to Korea. Now, Korea was a big mess, particularly with the flooding over of the communist Chinese, who basically pushed everybody back in Korea, all the way down to pretty much the ocean, the tip. And um, MacArthur couldn't do anything about it. He was famous for, they believe, the Enchan campaign, which is uh, the whole idea is while your enemy is flooding way down there, spares, uh, is not armed well, supply trains are bad, well, you go behind them and you, you, you make a battle and cut them off. This throws the troops that have overextended into chaos and you're able to control them a little better. He did this, of course, and, of course, a classic military move, uh, noted for thousands of years, and was able to have a minor success and stop the troops to a basic level. That only worked for a little while. The only thing that MacArthur could do after his failure as a military leader there, uh, he recommended uh, to uh, Truman at the time that the only thing we can really do is nuke China. So that was his suggestion, which was uh, turned down by Truman and um, certainly is not necessary. New generals came in, and of course we don't know their names, those are the successful generals, and fought their way back up uh, the peninsula of Korea to where we have today, what do they call that, the 45 parallel line or whatever, down, basically fought to a standstill and we have never signed a peace treaty. Does anybody know that? It's an armistice. Cease fire. So there's never been a peace treaty with North Korea. Um, and of course, South Korea is again one of those amazingly productive countries thanks to American money and American protection. Uh, all the billions and trillions of dollars poured into that country from all of what's being done there. And of course, they're not paying any of their defense bills either because America pays all that. So here we are in pig heaven again. We're getting all the benefits without any of the, at the end, having a big meal with lots of fancy wines and great desserts. And the check comes and you say, give it to the American. <laughs> How wonderful. Except the American people get uh, nothing. So sleep on the street. Don't get your medicines paid for. Don't worry about that. But you better pay your taxes and you better fight in our wars, mister. And when you come home, you get nothing. So the whole idea is these are the realities that we're looking at. This is his story. He went or retired after that. He lived to think about 84. Again, all these people that think we all die young. He lived to be 84, 86, like most people of his generation. Here's a guy that's been through all these wars and everything else, certainly stressed. Yet uh, he tried to go into politics and everything else. And he was a very popular um, candidate, but never could win anything. People liked him as the old warrior. And he's very dramatic. Old soldiers never die. They just fade away. This was his thing, and people loved this guy. And, of course, everybody kind of likes a military hero uh, to come back. And I don't think he certainly didn't show that he had any leadership abilities in Japan. And he probably would have done a horrific job if he ever became leaders of the United States as Presidente. As uh, soon after that, Eisenhower was voted in, and Eisenhower certainly, I don't know if he was a terrible president, but he certainly wasn't all that great. And of course, he was again anti-military um, and talked about the military industrial comp. But that's another story for another time, boys and girls. I hope everybody has enjoyed this. I hope you're sleepy now and can get your rest. Where are the fairies and the sugar plums dance in your head and show you the vulgar, rotten things that are left in this world today while, the, while all of our enemies sleep in peace with stacks of money and you live in a hole and can't even get medicine? 
Oh, you gotta love it. Until next time.